I'm Sam, and this is some Amazing Travels. Hey guys, this week I'm gonna tell you what you can do in Buffalo, New York. Buffalo is one of the United States' most architecturally rich cities, and a lot of people don't know that. You can start off your trip at the Buffalo City Hall. It's right in the center of downtown. It has this beautiful art deco architecture, and you can visit it anytime Monday through Friday between 8.30 a.m. and 4.30. The really cool thing about Buffalo City Hall is that there is an observation deck where you can get an amazing glimpse of the entire city. Not only are the views awesome, but they offer a free walking tour every day, Monday through Friday from noon to 1 p.m. So you can learn a little bit about Buffalo's history. And next up, what you wanna do is you wanna go see Delaware Park. It is over 350 acres of beauty. I mean, there is free space to roam. What a lot of people don't know is that Frederick Olmsted, the guy who designed Central Park, designed this park. Rumor has it that he had a lot of rules to follow when he was designing Central Park, but here in Buffalo, he had free creative reign to do whatever he wanted. So it is a fantastic park, just walking around. I went in the fall, the fall colors were beautiful. It's beautiful. This place is so huge that it not only encompasses the zoo, but also the Forest Lawn Cemetery, which was opened in 1849. It has some spectacular mausoleums, a little eerie, but absolutely worth a wander. Another fantastic piece of architecture you can visit is the Darwin D. Martin House, which was designed by Frank Lloyd Wright, the same guy who designed the Guggenheim in New York. I mean, this building is sleek and way ahead of its time. Definitely worth a visit. You can actually go inside as well if you wanna take a look. One of the, my favorite places that I visited was the H.H. Richardson Complex. This place opened up in 1880 and it was originally a psychiatric ward. After being abandoned in 1970s, now they are working to restore the property, which they have done an excellent job, I must say. Look at this place. It has this beautiful lawn. These fall colors are just exploding in your face and you have this backdrop of such a historic building. It just looks so cool. I mean, it kind of looks like a castle, right? Another place that is historic right in the center of downtown Buffalo is the Ellicott Square building. When it opened up, it was the largest office building in the world. It opened in 1896 and I mean, just look at the beauty of it. You walk inside and you have these amazing marble floors, these staircases that lead up to the offices on the second floor. And I mean, this roof line, like, wow. Just absolute detail, gorgeousity. <sighs> yeah, I made that up. <laughs> Another place to appreciate the architecture is Millionaire's Row. Way back when, the millionaires didn't want to live in the hustle and bustle of the city, so they moved to the suburbs, which is now what we know as Delaware Avenue. Epic houses that you can check out, and one of them is extra special because it's where Teddy Roosevelt gave his inaugural address. The address is 641 Delaware Avenue, and you can go visit this place. There is a museum inside as well. As I said, he gave his inaugural address because of the assassination of President William McKinley, which happened just a few days prior to that address. In the center median near 35 Fordham Drive, you can find William McKinley's assassination plaque. You can't miss it. There's a big old American flagpole there with the flag waving proudly. He was assassinated there in 1901. You can visit the plaque and experience a little bit of our American history. Now, another place that I absolutely loved was Shea's Buffalo Theater. This place was built in 1926 and it was built to resemble the European opera houses. It is still identical to this day because it is a national historic landmark. So they have to renovate everything to how it was way back when it was built. Fun fact, it was actually built to show silent films. And now you can see plays there, which I did. Do not miss that little history, a little culture right there in Buffalo's downtown. When you're in Buffalo, you gotta do one thing. You have to eat Buffalo chicken wings, or as they call them in Buffalo, chicken wings. They were invented there by the great Teresa Bellissimo, apparently at this anchor bar. 
Legend has it, Teresa was back in the kitchen while her son was tending bar and he asked her to cook something up for his friends. So she ended up tossing some chicken wings in her now famous buffalo chicken wing sauce. And 1964, on that day is when chicken wings were born the way we know it. I had to take a bite, or a lot of bites, really. I can already smell the white sauce. Hmm? Crispy, good juicy, spicy, and gotta say, everything a wing should be. If you are in Buffalo, something you have to do, I mean have to do, sports fan or not, is go to a Buffalo Bills game. These fans are the fanziest fans I have ever come across. Everyone was extremely welcoming, so much fun to be around. They have some crazy traditions like this ketchup and mustard tradition where basically some guy asks for ketchup or mustard and they squirt him down completely covered in ketchup and mustard. You can also take some shots out of a bowling ball. And of course, grill, drinking, chilling, and then you can go watch one of America's favorite sports, football. Last but certainly not least, if you are in Buffalo, you have got to make a trip to Niagara Falls. It's just 30 minutes outside of Buffalo, and you can see how awesome Niagara Falls is exactly in my other video, what to do in Niagara Falls. Thank you guys very much for watching. Hopefully now you know exactly what to do in Buffalo, what's hot, what's cool, what's beautiful for the eyes. If you like this video, please subscribe, please leave a comment, and hopefully I will see you guys very soon for a new video on what to do someplace else in the world because the world is fantastic. Get out there. Go see it.